all the words that you have heard, you don't remember them. Because God has not become real to you. You begin to doubt the word that you yourself have taught on other people. You begin to doubt if God can really do what he said he can do. But I pray to us from today and forth, the Holy Spirit will become real to us in the name of Jesus. The Holy Ghost is the top person in the Trinity. He is, if it's the one that Jesus gets to God and says, I'm leaving, but take him, it will be your best friend. It will be your comforter. It will be your sugar daddy. It will be your sweetheart. It will be that person you can talk to. It will be your lover. It will be your closest friend. He will be there with you. When you were down, he will comfort you. When you were strong, he will keep he will keep holding you. That is what the Holy Spirit is supposed to be to us. That is who he is to us. He's our confidant. He's that person that we can rely on. And if you've never really taken the Holy Spirit seriously, you should take him seriously. Because he wants to be close to you. Hallelujah. Tell the person beside you, the Holy Spirit wants to be close to you. He doesn't want you to just talk to him in the morning when you are praying and that is the end. He wants to have consistent conversations with you. That you are going on the road, you are talking to him. That you want to wear a dress, you are talking to him. That you want to take an examination, you are talking to him. What should I do? Where should I go? Should I say this? Should I not say this? That is the relationship we should have with Abba. That is the relationship we should have with God. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 to 14. Was explaining, and I don't think I have um, so much time to read all the scriptures, but you can write it down and read it later. He was explaining that the only Spirit is the endless of our inheritance. Unto redemption of the purchased possession, unto the praise of his glory. Now, this is what that means. The Holy Spirit was given to all as a seed. So, when you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, he gave you the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. He did not leave you empty. The moment you confess Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, you receive the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is that in every chance that you have. That when he comes back to take his bride, he is that the Holy Ghost is that engagement ring that he has given to you. So that when he comes back, he's going to pick you and say, This is my bride. This is my bride. So he left that engagement ring with you. He gave you the Holy Ghost, a seed of your inheritance, a seed of the promise of the Father. So that every time you have you experience the Holy Ghost. Every time you hear the voice of the Holy Spirit, you should remember that Jesus is coming back for you. Hallelujah. Every time you hear the Holy Ghost whisper to you, telling you this is the way to walk in it, you should remember that Jesus is coming back for you. So the Holy Ghost is the person of your inheritance, of your seed of your inheritance. That is just uh, an introduction. So what is the necessity of the Holy Spirit? What is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Number so one is that He prays for us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, verse 27, that we do not know how we should pray as we ought, but the Holy Ghost intercedes for us with groanings that cannot be uttered. The reason I said we should pray is the Holy Ghost before we even started, before I started, is because whenever we want to commune with God, whenever we are in a fix, whenever we don't know what to do, the Bible says it is the Spirit that searches the Spirit. He knows the things that we do not know. So he helps us to communicate rightly and to pray around. He helps us to know the right things to say. He helps us to know the right places to go. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you receive instructions. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, you, you receive revelation. Things that can be happening at home that you are unaware of. My husband was sharing the story with me one time. That he was he was praying and the Holy Ghost was made him to start interceding and he just started to call his brother's name he started to call his parents name and he started to pray at that time his brother was his mom just bought a gas cooker his brother did not know how to cook it up so he first switched on the gas cooker then he started to look for matches imagine the water how that could, could, could turn out he started to look for matches 
and magic were jumped in front of him, but he did not see it. He searched and said he did not see it, he took it off and left the house. He came back and got full out smelling of gas. Then he now came and shared what happened. And my husband was saying, no wonder, no wonder the Holy Spirit was making it to intercede. Let me share another story. My husband was going through a lot at the time, and I started to get scared. I went to pray any hours of the morning, and after I prayed for like an hour, the Holy Spirit just gave me a scripture. I just began to read that scripture, I began to shout it out, I began to rejoice over it, and all of a sudden I felt peace. Every fear I was feeling disappeared. All this happened, praying in the Holy Ghost. So whenever they tell you to pray in the Holy Ghost, it is not for fun, it is not so that people will know that you can speak in tongues, but there are deeper things that happen in the Spirit. The Bible says we speak mysteries unto God. There are things that you are changing in the spirit. There are clocks that are switching. There are demons that are falling. There are circumstances that are changing just because you can pray in the Holy Ghost. I want to encourage you. If you if you don't want to pray in the Holy Ghost, you don't receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Desire before the end of the service, it will land on you in the name of Jesus. Quickly, number two. You need the Holy Spirit to walk in the Spirit. Galatians 5, 16, Romans chapter 8, verse 9, we have to watch this. You need the Holy Spirit to walk in the Holy Spirit. To walk in the Spirit. The thing is, a lot of young believers, you use especially, we think by the time we start speaking in tongues, that is all. The Holy Spirit is not just for speaking in tongues. The Holy Spirit is not to show that you have the Holy Ghost, but to show that you have power. If you have the Holy Ghost, you must be changed. If you have the Holy Spirit, people should feel the fruits in you. If you have the Holy Ghost, let people see you and see Jesus in you. The way you talk, the way you relate to people, you must hear the fruit. The Holy Ghost is the seed inside of you and it brings forth fruit. So when you go to your place of work, when you go to your schools, wherever you find yourself, the fruit must show. You must bring forth for Scripture says, the, 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 the part in the book of John, that Jesus was saying, any tree that does not bear forth fruit, it will be cut off. You have received the Holy Spirit to bear fruit. And what is the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, meekness, faith. If you claim you have the Holy Ghost, and you still get angry all the time. We need to question that Holy Ghost that you have. If you claim you have the Holy Ghost and you do not love your neighbor, we need to question you. The Holy Ghost must be a fruit inside of you. The Holy Ghost must be evident from you to your colleagues. People around you should know that you are a Christian even before you talk, even before you open your mouth. You must carry the presence of the Holy Ghost. You must carry his presence. You must be a partaker of the fruit of the Spirit. Hallelujah. How many of us will begin to bear more fruit? Oh, you didn't hear me. How many of us will begin to bear more fruit from today? So shall it be in the name of Jesus. The third evidence is the gift of the Holy Spirit. According to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from the 4 to the end, the gift of the Spirit, the word of wisdom, the word of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, working of miracles, interpretation of tongues. These are gifts that are received as a recipient of the Holy Ghost. As a recipient of the Holy Ghost, you can have word of knowledge. You can have word of wisdom. You can walk up miracles. You lay your hands on the sick and they are healed. You pray for them and they are delivered. By the working of the Holy Ghost inside of you. This is for the edifying of the body of Christ. This is for building the church. Now listen to this. We cannot talk about the Holy Ghost without talking about power. We cannot talk about the Holy Ghost without talking about fire. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 3, verse 11, John the Baptist was trying to introduce Jesus. He said, Jesus will baptize him in water. He said, the one that is coming after me, who is Jesus, who baptized you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Fire is an accompanying of the Holy Ghost. Fire is something that accompanies the Holy Ghost. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, the fire of God will begin to burn in you. Hallelujah. When you receive the Holy Ghost, you are a carrier of the fire of God. It means that your heart burns for God. It means that your life is a, a, a weapon of the most high God. It means that 
Jesus. Amen. 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 Amen